Good morning, everybody. Coming to you live from my home in Virginia. We're very excited. Um, I even have my little salt lamp up. <laughs> the room is getting uh, filled, the furniture is getting in place. Um, I had a good long sleep till about five in the morning when Astro just started meowing. He really wants to go outside and I just want to give it a few more days before I let him out. He's been an indoor outdoor cat, but I don't know. I don't know what's out there. I wanna make sure he's safe. Anyway, um, good morning to everybody who's here. Let's see. Uh, today we are on lesson number 24. Um, good morning, Jim. Good morning, Edna. Good morning, Marty. Hi, Sadie. Good morning, Val. So good to see you all. Uh, okay. Hmm. Lesson 24 of A Course in Miracles. Number 24, I do not perceive my own best interests. In no situation that arises, do you realize the outcome that would make you happy. Therefore, you have no guide to appropriate action and no way of judging the result. What you do is determined by your perception of the situation and that perception is wrong. It is inevitable then that you will not serve your own best interests. Yet, there are, yet, uh, yet they are your only goal in any situation which is correctly perceived. Otherwise, you would, would not recognize what they are. If you realize that you do not perceive your own best interests, you could be taught what they are. But in the presence of your conviction that you do know what they are, you cannot learn. The idea for today is a beginning step in opening your mind so that learning can begin. The exercises for today require much more honesty than you are accustomed to using. A few subjects honestly and carefully considered in each of the five practice periods, which should be taken to, undertaken today, will be more helpful than a cursory examination of a large number. Two minutes are suggested for each of the mind searching periods, which the exercise involves. The practice periods begin with repeating today's idea followed by searching the mind with eyes closed for unresolved situations about which you are currently concerned. The emphasis should be on uncovering the outcome you want. You will quickly, quickly realize that you have a number of goals in mind as part of the desired outcome. And also that these goals are on different levels and often conflict. Name each situation that occurs to you and enumerate carefully as many goals as possible that you would like to be met in its resolution. The form for each application should be roughly as follows. In the situation involving blank, I would like blank to happen and blank to happen and so on. Try to cover as many different kinds of outcomes as may occur to you, even if some of them do not appear to be directly related to the situation or even to be inherent in it at all. If these exercises are done properly, you will quickly recognize that you are making a large number of demands of the situation, which have nothing to do with it. You will also recognize that many of your goals are contradictory, that you have no unified outcome in mind, and that you must experience disappointment in connection with some of your goals, however the situation turns out. After covering the list of as many hoped for goals as possible, for each unresolved situation that crosses your mind, say to yourself, I do not perceive my own best interests in this situation and go on to the next. Okay, great. Let's see what Madeline has to say about this. Greetings, beloveds. When one is observing existence, when one is creating and manifesting through the egoic mind, the decisions that are being made, the choices that are being made are not in the best interest in that they are being made from 
a position from a point of view and from a mind that sees through the eyes of fear rather than through the eyes of love. It looks through life, seeing what it must protect. It does not bring generosity to a situation. It brings fear. And through that perception of fear, what is seen and what is observed, what is thought and what is believed is that there is separation, that there is what is to be taken, that there is what is to harm. The truth is not seen in these situations. Therefore, one's own best interests are not being observed. Instead, what is observed is a denial of what is the truth or truth of you beloveds is there is no need for anything except unification and love and truth. Truth that brings you to the forefront of your beingness. Truth that allows you to see through any situation that you have created in the past that says that you are in harm's way and that is the farthest thing from the truth. When you have allowed yourself to perceive that a situation will go unkindly, a situation will be deemed to be a painful experience, a situation that would engender anger, fear. All of these are perceived from a point of view and from a position that says that you are separate from, separate than, separated from the very essence of you. And through these thoughts, you are indeed separated from them. As you come to know yourself, as you come to see and remember the truth, as you come to allow yourself to come to a state of grace, a state of remembering, a state of truth, you will begin to be able to perceive what is in your best interests. But in this deep process of the undoing of the mind, the undoing of the thinking that has brought you to the state in which you currently find yourself, you must take a look at what it is that you would wish to have happen rather than what it is that you anticipate will already happen. As you work through this process, beloveds, you will begin to see that each thought that you think in anticipation of negativity draws and attracts that very instance to you. If you can begin to say, I anticipate there will be love. I anticipate there will be friendship. I anticipate there will be goodness. And bring that expectation, bring that choice, bring that mental construct to each situation. You will begin to see that manifest for you. Understand beloveds, there are layers upon layers upon layers of faulty thinking, thinking that has led you to something other than the truth. And as you allow yourself to remember, as you allow yourself to clear the field of the debris of your mind, as you begin to bring the truth and the light, the shadows and the darkness will disappear and dissipate. And you will, beloveds, begin to think in your own best interest. However, you must think with a mind that is outside of the mind that you have created through the construct of the ego. This is when it is recommended that you reach out for assistance to say, ah, the thinking that I have thought has brought me to where I am. This is not a happy situation for me. Allow me to perceive things differently. And here the beginning of thinking in your own best interest begins. For when you are able to extend yourself beyond the mind that created the mess that has been made, you then begin the process of cleaning, you begin the process of clearing. And it is done from a place where you know truth and where you know love and where you know connection, you know oneness, rather than from a world of separation. And understand that through many, many incarnations, you have built a catalog or a library of why things occur the way that they do. So much of this thinking, beloved, is unconscious. 
So we are asking you to bring yourselves to bear to consciousness through love to say, perhaps there is a better way. Perhaps there is a way that I could begin to see things that are indeed more positive. So as you spend time today, beloveds, in this process, look upon things, look upon situations and question, what have I done that may have manifested this situation with this person or this circumstance? If you anticipate the bad, you will indeed manifest that. If you allow yourself to anticipate the good, if you allow yourself to think with a mind different than the one in which you have been thinking for a very long sense of time, you will come to see that you are able to completely alter the very fabric, the very landscape of your existence. This is available to all beings. And this is indeed the path and the journey that we walk together. Beloveds, we are delighted to be with you. Call upon us, know that we are with you by your side always. It is our delight to be here with you as we are always. Blessings and greetings to you, beloveds. We will speak with you again. Ooh. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. I love you guys. Hi. So sweet, my friends that are uh, on the webinar watching live, mm. uh, send me little love notes. It's, a, it's the sweetest thing. I love you all and I will see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful and blessed day. Bye.